the Nikon D5200 is a great camera. I've been using one now myself for over five years, so I kind of know a lot about it. In this video, I'm going to give you the highlights of my top five Nikon D5200 video tutorials here on YouTube, so don't go away. Hi, I'm Barry Callister for PhotographersFreedom.com, giving you the time, gear and skills to be the best photographer you can be. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for watching one of my videos. My channel is all about photography tutorials, Lightroom and Photoshop tutorials, gear reviews and other photography related stuff. So if that sounds like something you're into, please hit subscribe and ding that notification bell. Now I've done more than a few Nikon D5200 tutorials here on my channel. So what I thought I would do with this video is show you the highlights from all of those. So during each highlight you will see the full version linked in the cards up above my head here so you can go and watch the full version at any time if you like. And at the end of this video I'll also link to the playlist where you can watch all of these videos one after the other. So let's jump into it with video number one. Do you want to learn how to manual focus on Nikon D5200? You have come to the right place. I'll show you how in just a minute. We'll do it through the viewfinder first and then using live view because I think using live view, using your screen is a lot better because the picture's larger and you can check, you can get a sharper focus. On the side of the lens here, you've got this AM switch. That's autofocus to manual focus. So if you just click that to M, you're good to go. Look at your in-camera settings. So press your I button up here. Go down to your focus mode down there. And over here on the right hand side is manual focus. So just hit that if your lens hasn't got a focus switch on it like mine does. Get your focus point on the thing that you're trying to get in focus and turn the focus ring on your lens. And if you look at the numbers inside your viewfinder to the left of the shutter speed is a little circle that will pop up. When that pops up, you're in focus and you can click off your shot. To get to live view, what you need to do is next to your mode dial here, there's this little lever and it says LV down that way. Just flick that backwards and then you can zoom in using your plus and minus things here. You can zoom in and out. So you can zoom in there you see and then turn your focus ring and get whatever you want to photograph focus. I'm about to show you how to set the aperture on your Nikon D5200. So the quickest way to set your aperture on your D5200 is to use what's called aperture priority mode. Turn that until it says A. That is aperture priority mode. Aperture priority is where the camera makes aperture the priority and it will adjust all other settings so that you get the best exposure. So it will adjust your ISO or your shutter speed so that you get the correct exposure. Now remember aperture is confusing because smaller numbers mean a larger opening. Larger numbers as you can see mean a smaller opening. Let's have a look at how to set your aperture in manual mode. So turn your mode dial to M. In order to adjust your aperture now, you need to find your exposure compensation button on the top. Press that down and hold it and then move your command dial up here to the right or the left. And this is where you'll have to watch your exposure meter here, your light meter, because now the camera's not in an auto mode or a semi-auto mode like aperture priority. Um, so you need to adjust the exposure. Were you searching for how to adjust shutter speed on Nikon D5200? Good, you've come to the right place. There's a couple of ways to do it. We can use either shutter priority mode or manual mode. Let's take a look at the settings that you need for shutter priority mode. Grab a hold of your mode dial up here and turn it to S. When I turn my command dial up here, the shutter speed changes. The camera is deciding the exposure. So whatever shutter speed you choose, it will adjust the aperture and the ISO to get you the best exposure for your shot. So up on the top here you've got your exposure compensation button, the plus minus thing there. You'll see if you press that and hold it, an exposure compensation numbers come up there on your screen. So you just dial up your exposure compensation up here until you get the right shot. All right, now let's take a look at how to do it in manual mode. Turn our mode dial to M, adjust our shutter speed in the same way. You just use the command dial. And you have to watch your exposure meter, your light meter here. Make sure that you're getting the correct exposure. And you can see 
the camera is telling me that a shutter speed of 1 60th of a second or thereabouts 1 80th is going to take a decent shot here i'm quite happy with that this video is about your nikon d5200 camera settings and what to do with them when you finish shooting for the end of the day what i'm about to tell you is going to be extremely useful don't go away now, when you're out taking photos all day long, your camera settings are gonna change quite a lot, obviously, because you're photographing different things, the light's gonna be changing, etc., etc. You might start out taking photos of birds, and then you might photograph some flowers. You might take a few awesome landscapes. Then you might end up at a lake. And at the end of the day, take an awesome sunset. The next morning, you're sitting at the breakfast table eating your breakfast and a bald eagle lands right outside the window. Oh my God. You run outside like a crazy person, fumble around with your camera, click off a few shots, and then you stand there triumphantly thinking you've got the wildlife shot of the year. When you check your photos on your camera, however, what? they're all what? black. What? What? Okay, so let's have a look at a way that we can stop that from happening. Now, at the end of every day, if I've been out shooting all day long, I will reset my camera settings to a default or a home base. What I will do generally is I will set my aperture to f8, my ISO to 400, and my shutter speed to 1 320th, 1 250th of a second. Those are my default settings there, my main ones. I also make sure that my white balance is reset back to daylight if I've changed it. With my focus mode too, I make sure that is reset to AFC because I use AFC quite a lot to take photos of stationary subjects as well. It's uh, really good to do that and then if they start moving all of a sudden I'm set to get them as well. And make sure if you're using a lens like this Nikkor 18-55 to that's got a auto or manual focus switch on the side, make sure you reset that back to auto if you're doing your focus this way. So there you go. That is gonna make sure that you possibly don't miss out on that wildlife shot of the year the next morning. So at the end of every day, reset your camera settings back to a default, find one that suits you because you know what settings you generally use a lot of the time. Wanna know how to record video with the Nikon D5200? Well, this video is all about the camera settings you'll need in order to do that. So the first thing you wanna set is your video region. So hit your menu button up here on the left. Go to your setup menu with the little um, spanner icon. Go across here to video mode. Cross again and choose PAL or NTSC depending on where you are in the world. The next thing you want to set is your movie settings. So scroll, go up to your shooting menu, which is the little camera icon. Go across, select movie settings, go across with your selector. Um, and here is where you set your frame size and your frame rate. Here I'm going to choose to shoot in 1920 by 1080 at 25 frames a second. So I just click the OK button there for that to select that. Down here you've got movie quality. You can select high or normal. Of course I suggest you select high. The microphone here, this is where you set the level of your microphone sensitivity. So if you've got an external microphone, you want to turn the microphone to off and then your manual sensitivity you can adjust up or down here and you watch the levels down here at the bottom and you want it to come to about minus 12 there. Down the bottom here we have manual movie settings on or off. I put that on because if you don't do that the camera will choose the movie settings for you. Get yourself one of these. This is a white balance card it's 50 percent gray on one side white on the other you take a photo with you holding this in the scene and then set the white balance within the camera and i'll show you how to do that right now you want to go into your menu by pushing the menu button find your shooting menu which is the camera icon there go across and down to white balance scroll across there as well now down here at the bottom you'll find your preset manual so you can either use measure or you can use a photo so if you go across you can select your image and I've got me there holding the white card I click OK 
and you just say this image, click OK, and there you go, your white balance is set. The next thing you need to do is to have your camera in manual mode. So take a deep breath and turn that dial to M. To get a nice cinematic kind of motion blur to your footage, what you need to do is set your shutter speed to double your frame rate. So if you're filming at 25 frames a second, like I am here, set your shutter speed to 1 50th of a second. Choose the widest aperture that you possibly can. This will help you to get more light into the camera and enable you to shoot at a lower ISO. Check your exposure meter. If you're overexposing, lower your ISO. If you're underexposing, you'll have to raise your ISO. Now, a quick tip about focusing when you're filming your video. I suggest you don't use autofocus because what happens with the D5200 is it will focus hunt. I suggest setting it to manual focus and either using your focus ring or just leaving your camera stationary or moving your camera in and out yourself so you don't get that focus hunting problem. So I suggest not using autofocus. The D5200 does have an inbuilt microphone, but it's pretty terrible and I don't suggest using it. Get yourself an external microphone. There's a microphone input on the side of the camera so you can use that. Don't use the internal microphone. So there they are, or there they were. My top five Nikon D5200 video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. If you've enjoyed the highlights and you want to watch the full videos, I've linked up the playlist over here to my left, to your right. So if you want to watch all of those videos in their full version, go and have a look at that playlist. Now to the very important question that I wanted to ask you. What Nikon D5200 video tutorial would you like to see me do? Put your comments down below and let me know what you want to learn about the D5200 and I will attempt to do a video about it for you in the future. So before you leave here today, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you would like to subscribe, hit the subscribe button and ding the notification bell. Until next time, I'm Barry Callister for PhotographersFreedom.com. Get out there, take some wicked shots and I'll see you soon.